So I'm going to give a little personal update, if I may, at the top of the show, because this is our first podcast where I am being recorded cancer free. <laughs> Yes, I am officially cancer free as of last week. It's amazing. It's it is really really thrilling, but I have to be honest, my head and my body has not like caught up with the reality that I, it no longer has. As my doctor, I I actually on my way out in my last session, I was like, "Can I can I consider myself cancer free? Like are you going to allow me to do it or do I have your approval?" And she said, Yes, there is no evidence of disease. Of course, in such a doctor right, way. Right, of course. But that's she, how you want it. You want you actually want it in a doctor way because it makes you course. feel better. Right. I want like a medical. Yes, you need them to give you the, exactly. So I was like, ring the bell is great and all, but I need you, yeah. doctor, to tell me. Yeah. So there is no evidence of disease. But the thing about radiation is it does have a two week tail. So I'm dealing still with the burn and um, you know, radiation does burn your skin and the fatigue. So I'm still dealing with that, which is a weird. It's like I want to be all of a sudden in go mode and have everything, you know, the switch get flipped, but it's just going to take a little bit of time. It will. It will take a little bit of time, but you're on the other side. I and am you'll on the soon other side. Feel on the other side. I'm really excited to feel on the other side. I know. And you know what? It's just going to take whatever time it takes. I think that that's right. And I need to be patient, which you know I'm not. I know. I and know. And you can't speed that up. You know, someone, um, one of my friends who also has been going through breast cancer treatment this year said, in some ways, life after treatment is mentally harder because when you're in treatment, you kind of have your head down and you're just pushing through each day and you have your doctor's appointments. You know what your schedule is going to be. You know what your treatment schedule is and you just are pushing, pushing, pushing. And then all of a sudden you're out. Right. Well, it's like a singular focus right. and you devote all of your energy and bandwidth to that one thing because you absolutely have to. And now it's like the world sort of opening back up with all these other areas to focus. And it's it's, it's a lot. It's weird. Yeah. It's like I feel like I've been dropped into another planet well, or something. Well, I think that's right. I mean, I can absolutely understand why you would feel that way. So, and of course, you know me, uh, like I said, I'm impatient. I want like instant gratification. Right. I want to feel like exuberance and so excited about everything. And it's it's frustrating that I don't feel that yet. But I, I'm going to get there. You will. And you know what? It's just a day at a time. And also just be with whatever feeling you're really with. I know. I think it's actually good that this is coming at the end of the year because right. I think maybe I can get a reset going into January. Yeah. And you I know? think realistic expectations. I mean, it's not a it's not a switch flipped. I mean, it's not. I know, which is so annoying. I know. It is annoying. But I think processing that might be helpful too, just to realize that, you know, this is a this is a gradual shift into this other side again. Well, shout out to therapy. <laughs> so <laughs> my bill. Yeah, I, I will oh not not for you, ma'am. Oh. I, I need I need a licensed professional. Oh, 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 oh got it. Okay, okay. <laughs> you can come with me though. All right, I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm happily there. Joanna has uh very love what lovingly I guess I should say driven me to doctor's appointments to radiation she went with me today to the doctor I had to uh, deal with my expanders and she held my hand I even did. though I was cutting off I'm sort of sure cir circulation and no. blood flow and anytime my all, friend. Of, all of the things anytime um but anyway I'm so grateful to all of you I'm grateful to Joanna Aww. to John to our entire team I just everyone has helped me so much. My doctors, well, we love you, and I'm just so happy that you're here right now. I, I am here, and the good news is, it's amazing to say, you know what? I'm a cancer survivor now. Yes, you are. That's something. So even if my head and body aren't there yet, at least I don't know. That's at least, the truth. at least it's the truth. The yeah. truth is there. That's right. All right, guys. This week on Best Friend Energy, do we have a treat for you? We have Dateline's Keith Morrison and Josh Mankiewicz joining us. I, I literally can't believe it. Our heads are hey. exploding. It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> but I just want to address a Los Angeles headline. I don't know if a Los Angeles Times headline. Um, how Keith Morrison and Dateline became true crime sex symbols. I know. Look, <laughs> I, I don't I don't write them. I just read them. So I just want to know how how do you guys feel about this accolade? You you know you're. Um, look, I mean, I, I noticed I the mean, accolade was not about Josh Mankiewicz. Yeah, I mean, I mean I, yeah, I've I've been a sex symbol for a long time. So uh, he's uh, used to it. Yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty amazing. But it's uh, look when. When Dateline shifted to doing mostly true crime, which was around 2005, I think. Um, yeah, about that. I was not interested. Um, no. Um, I wanted to keep doing sort of the panoply of stories that we had been doing, which was a lot of different things. You, different Josh, was a, 
Yeah, Josh was the last one to come on board with murder yeah. stories. You you actually resisted longer than any of the rest of us. I did, and, uh, I, and, and, and I kind of I, appreciated that, frankly. I thought that was know, a good and, thing. And, yeah. and then I could tell that that's you know they, the, our bosses really wanted to do it, so I did one, and I thought, well, um, I kind of liked it. I liked it more than I thought I was going to, but I did not see this tremendous wave of interest in true crime no. coming, and Neither you know, I. and I think that's what's going on here. But it's so it's just so fascinating. The window you get into the way human beings behave, there's just nothing like it. No other kind of no other kind right. of reporting has ever get you that will ever get you there. Right. I mean, I, I get more astonished um sometimes at the things that people who are not accused of the crime, the other people we interview. Mm -hmm. Um uh, there's a uh, there's a woman on a, uh, in a story that I I that hasn't aired yet. Um uh, she started dating this guy. I think they met online. They start going out, and then he gets arrested for this crime, which is going to be the center of the of the of the uh, Dateline story. And it's a particularly brutal murder um, that he is accused of. And although they have just met and they've only gone out a few times, she continues dating him, um, even though he's in the slam. And then she's visiting him and then he's released sort of pre-trial and they're still together. And now they're making plans to get married, even though there is a pending trial, which might, uh, uh, might re result in his pretty much permanent incarceration. Uh, and so I said to her, like, um, you could not meet any guys who were not the subject <laughs> right. of an indictment. <laughs> Um, no one I mean, else how, available, right? And I it's mean, not how, a tax fraud. I mean, this is yeah, like I mean, serious. Like, right. like, no, this <laughs> is not right. This is not a guy. Right. This is not a guy who took too many deductions. Right. And uh, I'm like, like, and by the way, like, you know, um, you know, I would argue that somebody who's in trouble with the IRS might be, like, might, yeah, that, that might right. be a red flag. That's too. right. All right. But, I would uh, also say that's a red flag too. Yeah. yeah. But uh, you know, and she, and she, I said, well, what will you do if he's convicted? She goes, well, then we're going to have to reassess. <gasps> <gasps> well, okay. okay. That's shocking. I just gasped. That is yeah. shocking. We'll, we'll have to reassess. Her, she's going to have to reassess. She doesn't even have a choice. Of course. I mean, yeah. that just seems like a no brainer to me. Wow. But the fact that she wouldn't reassess it prior 